So I have so much to go over. I'm going to get right into it. I might talk a little more about the end, about what I liked about it, what I didn't, but bottom line, definitely worth a watch. I won't say it's as good as Devilman. I love Devilman, which just came out recently on Netflix. I won't say it's as good, but maybe. It's in the conversation for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain everything that happens on the show, all the mythology, all the plot, but I'm going to do it in chronological order rather than the order in which it's revealed to us episode by episode. I think that's the best way to really make it clear. So where does it all start? So back in the 16th century, at the top of Mount Cremona, humans find two things. One, they find the jet black inscription, which initially they're not able to read. And then two, they found find 13 winged skeletons that look like this ancient race of gods. So they bring these things down. They start working on trying to read the inscription, but they can't. And then what happens is initially it seems like this organization, Walla Blanca, they say, look, these, this is an ancient race of gods. Give us money. All you rich people, give us money. We'll take that money and then we'll revive this race of gods. And this will be very good. Now, initially it seems like there's this splinter group of rogue scientists with too much time on their hands that they develop these Reggies, which aren't really the gods of old, but they're these weird degenerate hybrid versions of the gods. It seems like it's just scientists doing this on their own. But what we find out later is that no, this was the plan all along. So the people who were in charge of this facility, they always saw this opportunity. They see these skeletons of gods and they immediately see the opportunity. No, what would be much better is we're going to create these Reggies which are basically, they're like living weapons. So one, during the Reggie's time where they're useful to us, the 20 year span where they're actually useful, they're gonna be part of the secret force. And that's what the, the market maker organization, it's these Reggie's when they're operational, they're just super soldiers. They go around carrying out assassinations on their message, missions. Then eventually, after 20 years, when they're no longer useful, they're so degenerative, they just kind of send them out into society and the Reggie's just kind of walk around, they're kind of screwed up. and at any point in time, they can signal these Reggies to basically go berserk and start killing people. So one, they get this super special fighting force market maker. Two, they've also flooded society with all these ticking time bombs that they can use to their advantage. And that's how they keep society in fear and they keep their societal control. And here we start to get some of the major important characters in this anime. So Albert Puzo, he's the guy who starts this Walla Blanca research facility or research program to create these super soldiers. Now he has a son, Gilbert Ross, and this is the friend of Keith that we see very early on. So his son, Gilbert Ross, initially they're on the same page about using this research program just to develop these readies, to develop these weapons. But eventually what happens is that Keith, actually Keith as a young boy, he decodes that inscription I was talking about. Remember that jet, jet black inscription that they're trying to decode? Keith actually cracks it. So he decodes it, and from the information they gather from decoding it, they're able to use these bones to actually start creating actual real gods. They're able to start creating these winged creatures. And suddenly, this program, which was never intended to actually create gods, suddenly it actually is creating gods. So the person who actually is part of creating these is Keith's father. So a young Keith decodes the inscription, and then his dad, Dr. Kazama, he is one of the biologists who starts creating these godlike beings. One of these godlike beings is Koku. So now we have this facility with all these godlike beings. One of them is Koku, and each of these beings seem to have a different power. So Koku has his eye, and that initially is the only power he has, and this eye can delete memories and do other things like that. And then other people have different powers. One of them has that blade that can kill the Reggies. Now there's these people with the different powers, and then there's also these kind of shadow selves for them that are kind of locked away, kept in isolation, and they seem to have the same powers. So there's another kind of shadow self who has a blade, except this one has another blade. There's another shadow self who also has the eye. And this is the big character, the character we see, the evil character, he's always wearing sunglasses. And we see this the whole time and we're not sure why. And then at the end, he takes the sunglasses off and the big reveal is that he also has the exact same eye that Koku has. So basically he was kept in isolation and all his all he's meant to do is just wait around for if anything happens to Koku's eye, I guess his eye gets taken out and, or not necessarily his eye, but if anything happens to Koku, he, the parts from him go into Koku and basically give Koku this kind of immortality. So Leika is the name of the person who's always wearing the glasses. He's Koku's kind of shadow self. And then Izaname is she's the girl with the skateboard we see. Now, early on, she's the first person that Leika meet. They both kind of meet 
they're both in a similar situation in this isolation being used for spare parts. And I think Izaname, there's a character, Kurosame, is Koku's childhood friend. He's uh, Koku's protector. It's a sworn duty to protect him. And he thinks Koku's the king. So they all have different powers, but maybe Koku's not aware of this initially, but they all believe that deep down Koku is their leader. He's their king. Eventually, maybe they all know that it's their destiny to all die. And then Koku gets all their powers and becomes the Black Winged King. But anyways, Irasame, Izaname, sorry, not Izaname, is she also has the blade. And I think Koku's friend, Kirasame also has the blade, so they're shadow selves as well. Now, what happens is, remember, Gilbert Ross and Albert Puzo. So Albert Puzo starts this program, only wants to use it for weapons, but then when he sees actual gods being created, he seems to have a change of heart, and he actually thinks, well, no, this could actually be a good thing. But his son, Gilbert Ross, says, no, this is not a good thing. What we're going to do is we're going to massacre the entire facility, all the gods, and then also there's one other individual who's very important, now, he's the evil character that always has the long blonde hair. That's how you can tell him apart. Now, he is at that facility, and I think he thinks he's a god. He's one of those people that was raised from the bones of the god, but he's actually not. What he is is he's a Reggie, but he's a special Reggie who doesn't seem to go crazy and doesn't seem to go insane after 20 years. So he's being kept at that facility with all these gods, not because he's a god, but because they're hoping they can use his... DNA, his blood, to create a vaccine and potentially stabilize all the Reggies so they're no longer this ticking time bomb of insane people in the population. Now, Gilbert Ross says, well, no, that goes against the whole reason we started this was to have this weapon and to have this totalitarian control. So he kills his father because his father's going soft, and then he leads this massacre of this whole facility. So Minatsuki, he's the stabilized Reggie. What he does is he kills Keith's dad, he kidnaps Yuna, which is Coco's, Koku's childhood friend, but then he gets brainwashed by the guy with the sunglasses, Koku's double, brainwashes him to thinking that he's the real god, and he's the real black winged king who has to kill Koku to take his place, when really, no, it's him, because he, he has the eye, remember, so he's Koku's shadow self, so what he does, he's, he convinces someone else to basically do all the work to pave the way for what's actually his destiny, even though... Minatsuki thinks it's his. So anyways, Gilbert Ross leads this attack. First, he goes to Leica, I think, and tells him, look, you're just being used for spare parts for Koku at this point. That's why you're not in the inscription. I've read the inscription. I know what the destiny is. You're not in it, but this is only because it's your destiny to take the place of Koku. So help me lead this rebellion, help and work with me, and we'll be allies. And then also, Gilbert Ross is a serial killer, so he kills people and he also uses Minatsuki to brainwash um, other people into confessing for the crime so he can keep killing people with impunity. That part's a little confusing. I'm not sure how it fits, but there's that as well. So anyways, everyone Koku knows is massacred. He assimilates all their powers and we get that line later in the show about black being the most perfect color because it's a blend of all the colors. So that's what it refers to. And then also Koku... He erases all his memories because he feels great guilt. I'm not sure what he feels guilty about. Maybe it's just survivor's guilt, but he erases all his memories except those of Yuna, his childhood friend. Now, he, he and Yuna have this special symbol. So what he spends the rest of his life doing is, one, he's trying to get revenge for all the people that killed all his friends. So he starts tracking down and killing all the people that were involved in this attack on the facility. And then he leaves the symbol as well. So hopefully, one, he'll get his revenge and be killing these people. Two when it comes out in the news and there's this serial killer with the symbol, you know wherever she is will see the symbol. It's not the worst plan in the world. Um, it's actually kind of cool. What I don't understand is why, how does Koku end up in this relationship with Lily? What is their relationship? Because remember, Koku has no parents. He has no friends. So he eventually works his way. I, this is, I don't understand what his relationship with Lily is. It's probably very simple. Someone can comment in the comments. But anyways, he ends up, one, being the serial killer and leaving all these symbols, two, having a relationship with Lily, who happens to be a detective investigating these serial murders. And then quick sidebar, I said that all this took place, this started in the 16th century, that's 1500s, when they found these skeletons in the inscription. Now, there's one interpretation you could say, well, the reason why this place is so much different and so much more advanced than our modern times is because they were able to use 
the technology they found in the inscription. But I don't think that's true because if you look at the flashbacks, they look like they have advanced technology already back in the 15th century or the 16th century. So what I think it's trying to say is that this is a different world and they were already more advanced than we were back in the 16th century. And then since Albert Puzo is the one who started this program and then his son, Gilbert Ross, that's who we're following, we're not that far in time. We're maybe 17th century, maybe 18th century, but I think it's actually set in the past. So even though things look very futuristic, we're actually not even in current time. And also Keith, when he's reading the inscription, he reads about this tale of the two shrine maidens. So this is metaphorical and it parallels what happens in the actual show. So there's two shrine maidens. One of them is killed and the, the, the blue wing, this is the, the blue blade that uh, Koku gets from his childhood friend. And then the other shrine maiden, she fights with him on the mountaintop and is destined to share his fate. So she is Yuna is the other shrine maiden who dies at the end of the of, at the end of the show. Then what happens chronologically is Keith and Gilbert who are friends. And I think they're friends because their dads are friends. Remember Gilbert, his dad started the Reggie program. Keith, his dad resurrected these gods with Keith's help. Now, Gilbert is friends with not friends. Gilbert has a thing for Keith's younger sister Erica. Now, then Erica's sister or sorry, Erica, Keith's sister, falls in love with the wrong man. Whatever that means, it's a mystery. Maybe we'll find out in season two. Then Gilbert gets very mad and kills her and then frames this Reggie named uh, Killer Kyle or Dead Kyle. And then he gets someone to brainwash Kyle to take the fall for it, but Keith doesn't believe it. So Keith actually, when this Reggie's being transported from trial or, or to prison, actually kidnaps the Reggie tortures him and tries to get him to confess that it wasn't really him who did the crime. And also because of his dad, Keith is one of the few people who knows about the existence of Reggie's. He also knows about Blue Steel, their weakness. That's why he has a gun that he's able to shoot and fight them with. He also knows about the gold ampules they have to keep drinking in order to not deteriorate. And also there's the term cannabis that we hear all the time. Now we hear this in different contexts. We hear Keith being referred to as Canopus, as the guider of Koku. We also hear of Keith's dad being referred to as Canopus, as the guider of these gods that, that he's created. We also hear of Canopus referred to as a star, and we also hear of Canopus referred to as the Moby Dick, that ship that is the headquarters of Makers, oh, I forget the name, the headquarters of that group of Reggies. And now our detective team, most of them are just characters. They don't really factor in too much of the plot. They're easy to remember. Eric is the leader. Kayla is the hacker. Her brother is Brad. He's the one who gets attacked. Jean is the attacker, the, the one that you think is good but turns evil. And then Mario is, is the meathead guy. And then Boris is the adorable old man. So now Maker Market or whatever that organization is called, they are all the Reggies that have this symbol, this skull symbol on their hand, and they carry out assassinations for the royal family. So if they get in any trouble, they just flash the symbol and the police let them go. We see this in the show. Now there's an elite special unit split off that's a, a part of them, but there's an elite unit within Maker's group that they are able to brainwash. They have the ability to brainwash, and they're also based out of that ship, the Moby Dick. So the members of this group, I'm just going to read the names, Minatsuki, we already talked about him. He thinks he's the boss, but really it's Leica that's the boss, the guy with the sunglasses. There's also Kamui. Now he's the most crazy of the Reggies. He seems to be falling apart. He's constantly popping back those gold and ampules. Then there's Kakuri. She's the little, the little evil. There's the two henchmen, sniper twins. I don't know how to describe them. I'll show a picture. And then Izanami, we've talked about her. She's the one with the skateboard. Also, Yuna, we've, um, we've talked about her. Now, she's been brainwashed to think that Koku was actually the one who massacred all those people. So she is part of the group, but really she's kind of a hostage, but she's been brainwashed to think she's a part of the group. And then lastly, we have Quinn. Now, Quinn is the guy who goes crazy at that charity event and talks about killing everyone with a poison gas. And I just said something wrong. Quinn is not the guy that's cackling like the Joker at the charity event, talking about killing everyone with poison gas. No, Quinn is the first guy. Remember the guy um, driving the tank? So the very first person, well, 
initially the series opens with there's these two scumbags are about to kill someone and then we see them get killed now this is koku he's killing them one to leave his mark and then two to also get revenge on them because they're these kind of evil people that were part of the horrible attack on his compound then we see there's this rampaging tank that's loose and we see Quinn is in the tank and then Koku kills Quinn. So this is the first member of that elite Moby Dick ship group that gets killed. And then we get to our second major set piece. So what the Moby Dick group does is first they kill this congressman and they put that symbol, the B leaves, um, that Koku leaves, they put the symbol there. So everyone's going to think that A, that it's uh, Koku that's doing it. And then they also leave a hint that they killed that person just as a warning that they're about to do an even bigger attack at this charity event that the congressman they killed was invited to or was hosting. So basically this is going to do, do something that's going to lure Koku out to this charity event because Koku isn't going to want his name associated with all these people being massacred at this charity event. So it's a very clever way to lure him there. And then Izanami leads Koku away from the charity event and she says to him, there was a time that I worshipped you. So this refers to their time back at that academy where I guess Koku was this god. And I don't know if he knew it at the time, but everyone else was looking up to him. And then she says, I'll never forgive you for not choosing me. Now, I'm not sure what this means exactly. I think it has to do with that prophecy I was talking about and the fact that she has the blue arm and then the other guy has the blue arm as well. So maybe Koku had to choose one of them to be the real version that he would assimilate and one of them to just be the spare parts version. I don't know exactly, but... Anyways, that was the whole point for her to lure Koku, who, and I don't know what she's trying to lure him for, and this is confusing. I think basically they're trying to lure him just so they can kill him, but they have to kill him in a certain way so it fulfills the prophecy. So I think their whole actions are because of Leika, who wants to kill Koku, but they have to kill him in a certain way because he doesn't want to just kill Koku, he wants to kill him in the certain way that he takes his place as the Black Twin King, so that's why they're trying to lure Koku to the special place and then kill him there. Anyways, the next big set piece we get is Bran Brandon, who's the, the sister of the hacker. He's looking through files and eventually he realizes that there's a mole in within the investigative group that's been recording the mole and feeding this information. So he realizes there's a traitor. Now, as he's leaving, he gets killed by Jean. Now, Jean, um, Brandon, eventually as he's dying, he sets his watch to a time that they notice it's not the right time and they notice that he set his watch for the initials of the killer. So that's how Keith realizes Jean's the killer. Then Jean goes on this diatribe against Keith saying, oh, he'll never forgive him. He wants to get revenge on Keith. Now I think none of this is actually Jean. This is him being brainwashed by I think Gilbert. So I think it's Gilbert, everything Jean says, that's really what Gilbert's saying. I'll never forgive you. Anyways, Jean takes Keith's knife and kills himself thereby implicating Keith in the murder. Anyways, Keith and 13... B, Koku, whatever you want to call them, they finally meet up. Now, they talk a bit, we get all this exposition, and then this ladybug thing attacks. This ladybug is actually Yuna, who's been brainwashed to think Koku is this murderer. Eventually, she realizes he's not. They have this beautiful re reunification. What word am I looking for? Reuniting. Beautiful reuniting. Um, there's a better word. I can't find it. Beautiful reuniting. But then, tragically, they both get stabbed on all sides, and then... They try to take um, Koku away and, you know, they're going to bring him to that to that mountain. But Keith actually with his gun saves saves um, Koku before he can get taken away. And this whole thing was just to set up where now Koku knows Yuna is with this Moby Dick group and he has to get there. And I think that the Moby Dick group, maybe they're up there because they know that Koku, he can fly, but he can't fly that high. So they think they're safe. But... Koku is going to use this this thing that actual I forgot what kind of bird uses it, but he's going to hike the Himalayas and then use the jump off a mountain and use the currents, and eventually he figures out a way to get up there. Now we have the investigators. Turns out that Keith has suspected his friend Gilbert for a long time and actually bugged Gilbert secretly. Now they set up this sting where they're going to send Lily, who bears an eerie resemblance to Erica. They think that the Gilbert killed Erica, so what they're going to do is they're going to send Lily in hope that he loses control and attacks her and then they're gonna pounce i i don't really understand it exactly and this is where i'm gonna try to describe it but i'm really really confused so basically gilbert uses oh i forget his name i'll show the there's so many stupid names <laughs> um 
I'm going to show the photo. Gilbert uses this Reggie to lure um, the people that are tailing him and Lily away to the wrong house. The Reggie then kills himself, blows himself up. It's that famous Reggie. I'll show the photo who's been popping uh, gold things this whole time and has been losing his mind. He was cutting his fingernails or his toenails with a knife. So a big Reggie. He's finally dead. And Gilbert has now escaped with Lily. And now there's this really convoluted thing where Keith, he, go, he gets inside Gilbert's mind and tries to figure out what Gilbert's been doing. And we see all these montages of Keith trying to piece together, not montages, we see all these visualizations of what Keith is trying, of what Keith imagined Gilbert, Gilbert's method is like with these bodies. And it involves this Ramon's psychiatric facility, which is by the Navy, so it's corrupt, and it involves... Um, Gilbert bribing bribing guards with with the gold that they need to drink and it involves fake cadavers that the the people think are cadavers but it's actually Lily and then it involves Gilbert they're like oh Gilbert the calls are coming from inside the house Gilbert's never left this building where I guess they all I guess they all are at this building that was never clear but I guess they're all at the same building turns out Gilbert never left and he's actually built a secret compartment behind um his wall but then they go, and when they go down to the compartment, they do find Lily there, and they find all these other dead bodies, but it turned out Gilbert managed to escape somehow as they were going in there. So very confusing sequence, one that I understand the least. If anyone in the comments understands it better, definitely comment. I'd appreciate it. And now we go to Koku flying to the Moby Dick. Now, Minatsuki, he's like, the hour of my crowning is upon us. He thinks he's about to become God, but really he's falling apart, and he doesn't understand why. It's because he's a Reggie, but he doesn't realize it. I think the sunglasses guy, he's been injecting him sneakily this whole time to keep him from actually falling apart but now the guy's like um the sunglasses guy's like well i mean we're, he's he's about to he's outlived his usefulness and he might as well be crazy and all amped up when he goes to try to kill koku and have the battle with him so he stops injecting him and minatsuki starts deteriorating finally at the end realizes he's a reggie realizes his whole life is a lie the destiny wasn't about him it was about the guy with the sunglasses and he dies now the guy with the sunglasses he takes yuna and flies to in a helicopter to this place at the top of the mountain, this place where the inscription was or is. I think the inscription is still there. Yeah, no, the inscription is definitely still there. So when they were bringing the the skeletons of the winged gods down and trying to read the inscription, they, I guess, would go up to the top of the mountain to read it. They didn't bring the inscription down. So he digs Yuna there. Big final showdown with Koku, and Koku ends up using a second blade. So he has the one blade that he got from his childhood friend, then he, um, and I'll put a photo and the name up. I just, I forget the name, Hirasame, I think it is. And then he has the second blade that the sunglasses guy doesn't know about from Ishinawa, Isanawa, whatever that stupid name is, skateboarding girl. Has a second blade from her and that's how he is able to kill um, sunglasses guy. And then he actually seems like he survives. So at the end, there's a bloody footprints walking away and we I think we see his back walking away in the distance, but I think Yuna dies and sunglasses guy dies. He's the only one who makes it out. Okay, so now we get to Gilbert Ross and his showdown with Keith. So this whole thing has been, Gilbert Ross is a murderer. He's friends with Keith and does respect him. And then Keith, at one point, when they're talking, start talking about how wrong murder is and how it's irrational. And Gilbert, this really hurts him and, and cuts him to his core. So he starts plotting his revenge. And his revenge is it's this big, grand experiment where he's going to see if he can force Keith, who's so anti-murder, to actually commit murder. And he loves... Um, Gilbert loves murder. He gets a great pleasure from that. But he says the even greater pleasure would be to see me take this moral upright guy and force him to become a murderer just like me, even if it was killing me. That Those four seconds between him pulling the trigger and my consciousness dying where I, we can share this little moment of us both being murderers together, that'll make it all worthwhile. So when the rest of the investigative team, they're driving to this place where this is the place where Erica was murdered. And they know this because Gilbert actually gave the investigators information about the murder. So they're a little suspicious because they're like, well, we're only able to get to this location because of Gilbert. Maybe we're playing right into his hands. And they are. Gilbert told him this and has orchestrated also that he knows that Keith would never murder him just for his own personal revenge reasons. He knows that Ke the only way he could get Keith to murder is to save the people he cares about. So he goes and he, he forces, basically, they show up and Gilbert's about to shoot them if Keith doesn't shoot Gilbert first. So in some ways he wins, I guess, and that's why he dies with a smile on his face as we find out. All right, I'm going to end the... <clears throat> All right, I'm going to end the video there because my voice is starting to go. 
a lot of talking, but the last thing I want to say, I'm not doing this anime justice. There's so many really cool philosophy and concepts that I'd love to explore more when um, Sunglasses Guy, I know I'm sorry I keep saying Sunglasses Guy, it's just, it's easier, I'm so, I'm so dead at this point. Um, and they only they don't say his name a lot. Um, they only say his name a few times. They don't make it easy by repeating names a lot. But anyways, when Sunglasses Guy says, and now your roles are over, and this idea of, you know, we're locked in these, in these roles and these legends that just repeat and repeat and repeat, and we live the same lives again and again in the same roles until some new king steps on and, and sweeps the way of the old legends and starts a new legend, and suddenly we're in a new cycle where we're playing all the same, all these roles again and again and again, but now they're new roles in this new legend. And then Gilbert echoes the same thing when he says, and we hear this line again and again, I'm going to etch, oh, what the fuck is that line? Something about etching memories. Despite your best efforts, an indelible code will be etched onto you. And it's just, and then he says, um, a new legend about with the two of us has been born today. And it's just, and again, remember, one of the these things are gods, the others are humans, and how it's different, how it relates. There's just there's so much to get into, and I can't because my voice is going, but it's an awesome anime. You should definitely check it out.